Hello, everyone. Welcome again to the Fearless Woman of Faith Speaker Challenge. We are in a, in a 28 day stint here and on day 24. I'd love it if you let me know where you're joining me from, whether you're joining us live or by replay. Let us know where you're coming from and what is God been speaking to you about being fearless? You know, I'm curious as to what attracted you to this challenge. What was going on in your world and what are you hoping to gain? Because I believe that you're here by divine appointment and trusting that in these conversations, in these sessions, that you are going to have rich deposits that are going to give you clarity, they're going to give you confidence, that are going to expand your vision for the capacity that God has given you in order to walk out the fullness of your calling. You know, I find sometimes we look at what we lack and base our decisions on that. And God is saying, no, look at what I have provided and what you access in me as you walk it out. Because the scripture says that our weakness is a portal for his strength. If we allow him to flow through those areas where we feel lack, his powerful presence and his transformative work flows. Hello, welcome, welcome. Let me know in the comments where you're joining us from. Well, without further ado, let me introduce to you our guest speaker today, who I just love. We have connected through another organization over the last couple of years, and you're going to love her as well. Renee Lawless, currently known for her portrayal of the lead character in Tyler Perry's The Haves and the Have Nots on the OWN Network. She's an actress, a seasoned theater actress. She performed with the Broadway National Tour of Wicked and also appeared on Broadway in Disney's Beauty and the Beast. She's a motivational speaker. She's known as a speaker's coach. She offers keys to having confidence in your presentational and public speaking skills from the conference room to the convention hall. Renee is active with the Family Legacy Organization, helping children in Zamba receive clothing, education, and medical attention while learning about Christ's love. It has become her passion. She travels there each summer to assist with their Camp Life program. Renee was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, moved to Jacksonville, Florida at a young age, and she is a graduate of Stetson University, did her master's studies at the University of Cincinnati in vocal performance, and she currently divides her time between joy, between joy, between Los Angeles and Jacksonville. And she is going to speak to us today on never let anyone steal your joy. Hello, Renee. Hello, 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 hello. Good to see everybody. Yes. So <laughs> I just like, yes, yes, I, I split my time between joy too. I got that. <laughs> Between joy and oh, Los Angeles and joy, and joy, and joy. Right, 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 right. Yes, right, right, although you right, want to right. give a large portion of your time in the joy category. <laughs> exactly. You can't only want to steal your joy. Exactly. exactly. That's right. Well, when we were off camera here, we were, I was talking about how I love your pink top. That's my favorite Thank color. You. you know, it's kind of a fuchsia. It's kind of, if you went on my website, it's kind of my color code. I like it. it it's a very bright color. It's more fuchsia than pink, but I agree with you. I can't wear a lot of pastels, so I like pop no. color. Yeah, it's a nice it's a color. Muted background. I had to like, you know, exactly. I'm an actor. Exactly. You need to stand out <laughs> and you do it, girl. Even if you didn't have that pink top on, you would still stand out. In a <laughs> I have a feeling you're right. Because of your... <laughs> right about that. Well, listen, as we get started here, I'd love it if you would share what you know how you came to do what you're doing today and and how that all fits into the never let anyone steal your joy so give us a little bit of a a snip a snapshot into the journey <laughs> oh my goodness it's gonna kind of start one place and kind of flow into the second part of that answer you know i've always been a performer i i think i you know i went from the birthing table to the church pew i didn't pass go i didn't collect 200 dollars. i mean bam 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 i was saved at seven and uh until i was you know, even though in school I was, the, I was saying in choirs at church all the time, I was the loudest person in choir. I did every school production. But, you know, I grew up in a small I was uh, I was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I grew up in a small town, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which for those of you who don't know what that's from, it's not the Oak Ridge Boys. It's where the atomic bomb was made. Oh, wow. And 
Y'all just got a little bit of information today. And, um, and uh, my mom worked at Y12 Plan. It's still there today. But in that small little town, my parents exposed me to a lot of things. They exposed me to, I was watching musicals every Saturday. They exposed me to theater, all kinds of music. I was, was very out there. But in my little town, we didn't have, you know, this is a time where you had to get up and cross the room to change the channel on the TV. You know, we only had three stations. And... <laughs> It was in the big box and we didn't have reality television. And even though my dad told me all these stories, I never thought a little girl from Upper Tennessee, I didn't, I didn't think someone like me grew up and became an actress or mm. became a singer or did this. I loved it. I was doing all that, but we didn't have that in front of us all the time that this is actually a possibility. So in my mind, I had to do something else. So I wanted to be a pediatrician. Well, at 13, my mother decided to show me the inside of a turkey on Thanksgiving, and there went my medical career. So I was not going to have that ever happen again. But at the same time, my voice started sounding different than everybody else's as I was singing. I started taking voice lessons at 15. I was doing all these plays, and I realized, you know what? I can do this as a career. So fast forward, I had planned to go into performing and how this comes into the joy. I was singing in church and how this transpired. And so I'm still an actress to the day. And I can tell you about my acting career and how, it, you know, the, the hills and the valleys of it. And I can get into that, but that's not what we're talking about at this moment. Well, we can, we I, can talk some of that if you want we to. Can, but. No, we, we, we can, but that's not. It, it, it all ties in is what I'm trying to say. So my, so what made me the woman I am today and the path in various areas um, was my senior year of high school. I was the victim of a very, very vicious bullying incident. Mm. And it happened on my high school uh, homecoming uh, football game. And cutting to the chase. I had been called out of the stands. I was in my day, we all got dressed up for homecoming. You know, everybody got all fancy in the stands. Yeah. And um, I happened to be dating a guy in the band and there was a dance later that night, but I was all dressed in my, you know, had a big mom, you know, we back in the day we did it all. Right, you know? <laughs> and um, I had been called out of the stands just before halftime from somebody that I thought was a friend. And it was this moment where I'm between the football field and the stands, the whole school is looking and I'm about on the 50 yard line. And all of a sudden you see this in movies, like everything starts seeming like it's moving in slow motion mm -hmm. and it got really quiet and it wasn't quiet, but I just knew something was wrong. And I got spun around and somebody with a bag over his head plashed a big pie in my face just as the halftime buzzer went off and the whole school saw it. Wow. And uh, my father happened to be there that night. Long story short, I got pulled into the bathroom and it was because of something that had happened at school that was not my fault that somebody blamed me for me standing up for myself. I was standing up for something going on at school and mm -hmm. I was asked to read a letter and everyone thought it was my idea and I was just I was just the vessel. But that's neither here nor there. So anyway, I uh, halftime starts. I missed my entire halftime show and the second half. My father came down, took me home. My mom is like going, what's going on? My dad is livid. And I go home and I take a shower. And about 30 minutes later, my mom comes in and she sees me uh, putting my makeup on. And she said, what are you doing? And I, because I had taken a shower, washed my hair, washed all this. I cannot be about a, around a Boston cream pie to this day. It's just something I can't, I can't even be around it. But I had done my hair again and I was putting makeup on. She goes, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the school dance. And she goes, what? And I said, I'm only a senior in high school once. I only have a homecoming game and a homecoming dance once. And we didn't have cell phones in those days. I said, I got a man, you know, I got a boyfriend there waiting on me. And I'm not going to let them win. I said, they took away the halftime. They took away the second half of my game. I will never get that back. They are not taking away this dance. They are not going to steal my joy. Wow. And that was the launching pad to, and I, and I just kind of kept it. And I just kind of kept, that was the launching pad for me. Um, for years. And as I've gotten older and other trials came into my life, I realized that's my message, you know, is never let anyone steal your joy. And I have had other, it, but that one incident helped me go overcome so much adversity in college 
my professional life. There's a lot of rejection in, in, in my industry. Um, and, uh, by the way, I'm fine. I've gotten over it. All those people <laughs> that are responsible for that incident. Every single class reunion is still apologizing. They've <laughs> by the end of that year and the whole rest of that senior year, I was horribly treated in the hallway. I had to Mm. find different ways to get to class because I was being bullied every single day. But by the end of that day, the main person behind this whole thing kind of came up and said, if you can't beat them, join them. You know, and it all came to resolution by the end of the year. And through the years, you know, I'm actually good friends with some of those people now um, because we became adults. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't understand that from high school. To college. <laughs> that is true. It is true. And <laughs> <it's> adults. <laughs> It is amazing how you, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I'm sorry. So, but you know, um, and I want to say, because we'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but we have to remember as far as joy is concerned, happiness and joy are two completely different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Happiness is of man. Happiness is our own self. Oh, I feel happy today. Or, oh, this makes me so happy. But then something horrible could happen and now you're unhappy. But our joy yeah. comes from the Lord. It just so happened this Sunday service, we're starting a new um, um, sermon series at my church this Sunday. And it's James 2, 3, which is count it all joy. And I thought, oh, this was so meant for me this week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he say, you know, it's... Um, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, mm -hmm. knowing thus the testing of your faith brings on perseverance. Count it all joy. Be thankful for the testing because something better is coming. It's a testing. Yeah. Something better is coming. And um, yeah, so that's how that was my snippet. It was a long snippet, but that was my that snippet. That is beautiful. But, you know, there's so many layers to this questions in terms of where you found the strength to even was that just a moment of a revelation where you brought up with a with a very positive parental for parenting in terms of you know what what was it you know i have often asked myself that <laughs> i really wish i could give a quick answer uh, uh, to your first point yes i was raised i'm an only child and i'm not spoiled <laughs> I had just as been, I had switchings like Lord Jesus, you know, the switch. My parents did not bear the rod. People, oh my people, Lord. Have, people ask me that too, because I'm the youngest of eight children. People say, oh, you must have been spoiled. I'm like, no, I was not spoiled. No, <laughs> no, no. I didn't, yeah, I didn't get everything I wanted, but I didn't need anything. Let's just put it that way. I tell people, I said, my needs were met. Uh, but my parents had a very strong work ethic. We were from Tennessee. And my mom used to, uh, my my mom was raised where she had to feed the chickens and the goats before she went to school every morning. So, mm -hmm. and ironically, although I had a very loving home. And <laughs> I tell people this, uh, <laughs> my parents were married and divorced to each other three times. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I think we're, that's a good we're getting record. real and raw here, people. I think, we're I, really I, think I beat, you know, Richard, uh, 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 Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton on that one. But, you know, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is even though, and their divorces were, it, it just was this time, but they, they, my dad died two months before their 50th wedding anniversary. So mm -hmm. they were very much in love, just didn't know how to, sometimes they didn't know how to handle adversity. Uh, so maybe that's where I got it. But um, I'm, I have to say, I got teased a lot growing up. I have a big mouth. I talked a lot and I was loud. So I was always getting teased. So I had already been dealing with that kind of adversity adversity leading mm -hmm. up to what happened my senior year. And I think it was, my whole life, I never cowered. I never struck, I, 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 I really, I've always been um, reticent to use the word scared. Scared mm -hmm. means to recoil. 
Like I'm scared to get on a certain ride or I'm scared to go in a haunted house because I'm scared of that. But I step through fear. I find fear, fearless women of faith. Fear is a forward motion. False evidence appearing real is fear. False yes. evidence appearing real. And fear is forward moving. It's We all go into situations being fearful, but we mm -hmm. don't stop. And so when you say, I'm frightened, that's one thing. But when you say you're scared, you're pulling away from something instead of mm -hmm. walking in faith, in fear. I need to make, I want to change that F-E-A-R. I want to make it something more like faith, something, faith eternal aligning with, I don't know. I'm going to use that acronym. But um, so I think, I don't know what it was that day that just, it was more like, I'm not going to let these people win. Yeah. It was just, I, and I, maybe I should just credit it to the Lord because I really asked myself, what was it at that moment that made me say no, that made me turn around? Now, I will mm -hmm. say we didn't have cell phones and all that when I was a little girl. Praise Jesus. There's no document. <laughs> exactly. So I didn't have that social media teasing. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was just a perseverance, but I was young. But making that decision at a young age help me keep that mantra going forward, especially, I mean, I can take it back to, um, in 2021, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when I got the diagnosis, I didn't cry. I was more afraid about losing my hair and I wore cold caps for all of you out there. So I kept most of my hair. It's a lot of it's growing back, but I lost about 40% of it. And um, while it was a very uncomfortable time, when they told me I was cancer free at, after all the chemo, I said, I know. And they were like, what? And I said, I never doubted that I was, mm -hmm. I was going to be this. I never doubted because I told people I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I didn't have breast cancer. Okay. Uh, birds are powerful. Our words are powerful. You know, joy is not dependent on our circumstances. Mm -hmm. Because some of the world's most miserable people are in the most envious positions. So, you know, we can't judge our circumstances because... It goes back to, I want to say, our joy comes from the Lord um, and that I will be joyful in all things because he is our provider. He is our uh, truth. He is our, when everything is dark, we have hope because of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Our joy comes from that Holy Spirit. Exactly. So why, so, and I love that distinction because I think a, a lot of people struggle with this concept of joy being not dependent on their circumstances. Right. You know, that the distinction between the happiness and the joy piece, how the joy can be an ongoing state that you rest in, that you reside in and, and how, and why is that important that you don't let, I mean, especially if we're talking about women of faith here, kingdom women mm -hmm. who know the Lord you have joy himself in, on the inside of you. Why is it so important for us to, first of all, recognize what are the things that try and steal our joy, but what it does to us when we allow that joy to be stolen? I think it makes the whole body shut down. Um, and I want to I'm going to back up a second. It, what it means to let, when our joy is stolen, you are now what I call, you are now stopping what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And you're, you are now putting mm -hmm. a block. I don't want to hear that today. I don't want to talk about that. You just don't understand. You just don't understand, Lord. You don't understand. How can I be joyful? I just lost this person. My finances are down. How can I be joyful? Job mm -hmm. was always joyful, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going through a season right now where I feel like I have my Isaac on the table and my hand is raised with the knife and I'm waiting for mm -hmm. the ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. But 
I count it all joy that I that I know that I have, you know, done what the Lord has said. Now, I want to uh, share something. In order to experience true joy, we have to make sure we are right with the Lord. Mm. Because it's not just to say, well, I'm a Christian, so I have joy, so I'm going to go through my day. But if we are not living with, if we are not walking with him daily, the joy shouldn't be gone, but it will be diminished. There is an acronym that my mother used to love. It was in the, it was big in the seventies. It's still out there a little bit and it's called J O Y. And it was Jesus first, others second, you last. And even as a teenager, I had an issue with that. And I mm -hmm. thought, Hmm. So as an adult, I have, changed that acronym. Mm. And I think it's Jesus first, ourselves next, and then yada, 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 yada. <laughs> I, I love that. that. And I, I know you love that so much because Jesus is, the, is on the throne as the king. We have to walk with him. We need to make sure we are right with him before mm. we can serve our spouse, our children, our job, our daily life, or do anything for that homeless person on the street. There's a reason why I said, um, love your neighbor as yeah. yourself. There's a reason the airplane says, put the mask on yourself first before you help others. Mm -hmm. You cannot give life or oxygen or support or aid to someone else. If you do not, if you are not right with yourself. Yeah. It's and so it's good. not confidence. There's a difference. It's not, yes, it's confidence. Your confidence in the Lord. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to speak to this person. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to make it through. But because I have you, I know all things are possible through you. And um, going with joy I cry a lot, <laughs> you know, there's a, is this a Bible verse joy comes in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I meant to look that up. I meant to look the verse up because I say it all the time. Joy comes yeah. in the morning. I've changed that too. Sorry, Lord. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, change the I, change I changed the spelling. I changed the spelling. Okay. Joy comes in the morning is in the Bible, M-O-R-N-I-N-G. Okay. But I also say, in addition, joy comes in the M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Yes. Yes. Joy comes in the morning. <laughs> and that's what it talks about, right? He turns our morning into joy. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's English spelling. So I didn't look up the Greek word. So maybe it means them both, you know, <laughs> or the Aramaic, whatever it was, you know. <laughs> but but you're right. You're just you're just putting. Uh, you're playing on the words. The meaning is still the same as what it says in Scripture. Is because he turns that. So in the midst of that morning comes joy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I I also. Uh, speak of, you know, because people go, but I'm broken. I mean, you know, the biggest joy, you know, during, let's take COVID. Mm -hmm. During COVID, you know, a lot of joy stealers were out there. Our job, you know, our family can steal it. What was going on, the uncertainty, all of that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, if you sat into that, there's a verse, through brokenness can come rebirth. Mm -hmm. That's why joy comes in the morning, you know. Through the adversity comes the birth of joy. In 2 Timothy 3.16, I want to read you something. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof and correction, for the reigning in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every work. The word correction in the Greek word, it means epinorthosis. Notice the word ortho. And you'll see the relationship with orthopedics. It's the only place in the word is used in the New Testament. And it is defined as setting to rights, reparation, restoration, mm -hmm. such as a fractured bone. 
So I say when we are broken, count it all joy because that's the way the Lord puts us right. Cool. And brings us through rebirth. How many people through all of that adversity of COVID came out as a new person, yes. new job opportunities, a, a new passions, better relationships with their family because they were locked up with them for so long, you know? So yes, but you got to keep that joy as the focus. I know I'm a little all over the place on that, but you see what I'm saying? But it, yeah. And it's a choice, right? It's I am sorry. That's not supposed to happen. I had done this. No, no, no. I thought I had turned everything off. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, it's all right. It's all right. We're good. <laughs> I was like, I never saw that before. You're all joy when you face trials of many kinds. Exactly. I'm like, oh no, I'm a terrible so It won't happen anymore. Okay. <laughs> Okay, where were we? No, <laughs> it's okay. true. It's a joy. It's a choice. I see it as also a choice. It's also something that, like it talks about in Galatians five. You know, the fruit of the spirit. Yes, the joy yes. is a is a byproduct of our relationship with the Lord as we look to. So you were talking about, for example, going outside, God, I, I can't be joyful because I have, you know, this going on in my life or this going on in my life. Instead of looking out there for the source of our joy, it's like the source of our joy is here. Yes. The source of the joy is here. The happiness is out there. Mm -hmm. Because like I said in the beginning, there's a difference between happiness and joy. My joy, we're going to walk through this together. We're going to yeah. walk through this storm together, hand in hand. I'm going to be a little, but it's, you know, but at the end of the day, I come home. Okay, Lord. In the words of Scarlett O'Hara, tomorrow is another day. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If each new day brings. And, I, you know, just as I'm thinking about that scripture in Galatians 5, and I don't really know. We don't need to go anywhere near this. But I, it's, it, it's always struck me with that passage. It talks about the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, right. faithfulness, you know, all those ones. And joy is one of them. Against these things, there is no law. Like there's nothing. <laughs> it's like the true freedom. It's like there is nothing that can come against you to 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 if you do not allow it. If you recognize that there is nothing is in this that is unlawful but at the same time that can can come to harass you or to harness you because it says that they're limitless there is no law meaning there's no you can only have this much joy you can only have this much peace you can only have this you can only do it now you can only do it here the law <laughs> kind of puts those parameters on us right <laughs> we put on the full armor of god to protect ourselves from the outside forces but the armor is external, mm -hmm. even though it Christ armor is also internal. You know, the, 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 the don't make me quote that. I'm going to mess it up. The helmet and the breastplate and the arm and the shield and the sword thing. I'm going to get it all messed up in the belt. Okay. Of <laughs> I know what it is, but I don't make me quote that. Just right don't now. have anything exposed. Just make sure you got <laughs> exposed. But in our heart is the joy. And mm -hmm. you're right. There is no limit to our joy. I mean, to bring a very morbid, a morbid thought. I mean, think of all the people that were persecuted, the Christians that were persecuted by stake, fire and lion um, mm -hmm. uh, in, in history, but till their last dying breath proclaimed the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because exactly. their joy was not in their circumstances. I mean, think of how many children that we know have, you know, um, been in the hospital that have changed people's lives because of their, even though they, these children were dying and were crushed for that, they still had this joy and this happiness, even yeah. through pain. And yeah. um, this powerful. week I lost a very close friend. Oh, no, I, I was, it's my, it's a very close friend's wife. Oh. And I was friends with her. And I hurt for my friend. I hurt for her, but he even said, this pain and this grief is more than I can 
possibly think and bear, but I know she walks with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know my, you know, as I have and hope and joy knowing that she is just fine. Yeah. You know, and you know, my favorite verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. Yeah. It always has been for a lot more reasons. First of all, it showed that he could be sad. And we know this man was a walking epitome of joy. Okay. But the thing I love about it the most, yea, it, it showed his humanity in that one moment. Mm -hmm. But he wept because he was sorrowful at the loss of Lazarus, knowing full well, knowing full well he was going to resurrect him from the grave. Mm -hmm. But he still mourned. Yes. Yeah. So God is saying, yes, I know there will be times of trial. I know there will be times of unhappiness. I know there will be some times that you go, why, how in the world am I going to be joyful in this? Because this is not of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever this is, is not of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. This is of the Lord, our dwelling place. Mm hmm. That's so good. And I'm thinking, you know, in that context, too, is it doesn't matter what happens in our life or around us. If we are rooted and grounded in the truth, it's that the joy comes from knowing our identity is in Christ. Our value, our worth is not determined by how life turns out, what people say to us, what things come and go. It's 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 secure in him. It's immovable if we root it in him and if we come to understand who we are in him and who he is in us and whose we are and I, that in and of itself the the focus of our joy is is in that like jesus said the joy set before him he endured the cross because he saw on the other side the freedom that would come to us because of his one act and to him that was the greatest joy to be in exactly. relationship, to restore to that. I mean, even, you know, in, in Gethsemane, Jesus is sitting there pleading, why? I mean, he was the pits of despair. This is even before the cross and the beatings and all that. But he just said, you know, thy will be done. And oftentimes, especially in the, you know, in different seasons of my life, I will pray purely for peace. I will say, Lord, I can't fix these circumstances. Only you can do that. I can't do anything about this. I just pray for peace in it so that I don't lose my focus on you. That no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, I can be at peace. Because what happens when we allow all of that to come down on us, we start losing sight of the one who really does hold our future. Mm-hmm. You know, when we start cowering, we're not looking up. And you know, we I have laid on the ground prostrate you know, with the Lord and going. And you have to find that morsel of energy. And yeah. trust me, back to my original story. I did go to that dance. I had the time of my life. And a lot of people, teachers, came up and said, did this just happen to you? And they said, and you're here? So it completely changed how I was looked at by my my, my, my teachers. Mm. That didn't mean that I didn't go home and cry myself to sleep. Mm. Yeah. It didn't mean that I didn't cry a lot during the course of that year. But at that time, maybe I didn't understand the whole concept of the joy but I knew I was going to be okay. Yeah. It's so good. That is so good. So, I mean, there's so much we can unpack here, but how does this relate to helping us to become fearless? Okay. Um, I was like, I was like, I was like, what is she going to ask me now? Um, <laughs> how does that joy? Dollar question. How does it <laughs> Um, 30 seconds. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I was kind of saying that earlier in that walking in faith, 
walking, stepping. We need to step through fear. Fearless meaning what no man can put in front of me that God cannot fight. There is nothing that can, you just said it earlier. There is nothing that can come against me. There is no circumstance. There is no trial. There is no stumbling block. There is no nothing that can come against me that can take away my relationship with the Lord. So once I have that, I can step out of anything because God is my partner. God is my partner. He is arm in arm with me through as fearless women of faith. I am forward moving. I am forward walking. I walk out. I, I'm a big risk taker. So I step out in my joy. And people are going, what are you doing? And I said, I'm just doing what God tells me to do. They said, but you're not supposed to go that way. Well, you know. I'm supposed to take the road less traveled. So um, it's being fearless women of faith. The way I look at it is to be fearless is almost like overcoming. I don't want to say overcoming adversity, but being able to rise above adversity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like that. Take the high road as opposed to the low road, but through our joy, the joy stealers are going to come every single day. They're going to come at us from every different direction, but as long as we have our eye on the prize. So if you are someone that says, I want to be a speaker, I want to be a, a missionary. I want to be a corporate executive. I want to, Whatever you're calling in life, I want to be the best homemaker, wife, mother, whatever that is. If every day you get up, I am going to step out today and I am going to step out and do my and 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 just keep my eye on the prize that I'm going to be stepping out in gratitude, stepping out in joy, stepping out in faith. No matter what comes to get me, no matter what teacher or what um uh somebody at my job tries to take it, I'm going to show them love. I'm going to show them kindness. I'm going to show them no matter what happens, I'm going to turn that other cheek. It's very hard. Don't get me behind the wheel of a car on the 405. Because <laughs> So I've now learned to go, really? Really? You must, God must really have a direction for you to go that fast. <laughs> And I've, I've changed my my breath and the car, and I say, really, all day, really, really, Lord, please make sure he gets there just so fast, you know. <laughs> and you know, so I have a lady in my prayer group that go that blows kisses all the time in the car. That's the great. That I love it. I love it. You know. So as far as how can that be for fearless women of faith? It is if we wake up every day and that first, you know, we, we pray that first step, I'm stepping out on joy. Yes. I'm stepping out on joy. Oh, I stepped on the kid's toy. Oh, but I'm taking another step, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's, it's a forward, like I said, fearless is a forward moving. So it's just true. keeping your eye on the prize. It's so true. That's so yeah. true. Joy and fearless. Maybe I didn't prepare that right. I really didn't. No, um, no, you're, you're, no. And, and you know what? It's not a trick question. <laughs> but I am, um, but no, I, um, but, but it does. Cause I think about even in the, the Zacharias says the fear of the Lord is our strength and, and yes, to be yes, fearless, yes, yes. right. To be fearless, be fearless, we need to have strength. We need to move forward. Like you said, with a determination, with a focus and it's where is our focus and what is it that's fueling us? Is it the fear or is it the, the focus of what the Lord has done? And so when we no, have a joy, no, going, no, we're moving no, every and it's also what we tell ourselves, for instance, and I had to learn this myself. This was something I struggled with. Let's talk about finances. Okay. Um, people go, well, I don't, I mean, my finances are, are draining. I don't, I, I don't, I, you know, I, things are running out. What am I going to do? My bank account is almost empty. Well, what if your bank account was just partially full? Exactly. <laughs> and God kept that big space to put more in. Wonderful. So instead of being almost empty, what about partially full? So now I've got room to fill it up even more. 
That's so good. <laughs> and so if we, if, we, if we turn the vernacular around mm -hmm. and keep that, you know, okay, it's that it is a half empty, half half full type glass thing. But if we think in the full as opposed to the empty, yes. what we tell ourselves changes our mind. So good. That is so good. Yeah, is ask, asking God to shift our perspective so that we are rightly. I love it. I love it. And this is a daily thing. You know, this is like you said, there's always things, people and things trying to come and steal that joy right. because I believe it's a weapon as well. I believe it's one of the weapons, just like mm -hmm. peace is a weapon. You know, it's a fruit of the spirit, but I also believe it is a weapon against the darkness that tries to overshadow us. And um, the more we we learn how to use that weapon just by resting in it and embracing it. And you are a an example of joy, you know, from when I from as long as I've known you, Renee. So this is <laughs> I have my moments. I have my moments. Well, you know, I, I learned that um I'm one of those people. <laughs> Okay, this is my biggest flaw. <laughs> Confession <laughs> time, everyone. No, <laughs> this is my biggest flaw. People go, you know, do you listen? Trust me, I know every single one of my own shortcomings. I could write a whole list, and I think if everybody knew their own shortcomings, they could really change that. We have to write that what we we know we we sup, you know, some besides just our positives. But I will, I will sweat the small stuff. I will sit there and get so upset that a letter got misplaced or just something stupid, just just really something stupid. But the whole house could burn down. I, my car could be in an accident or all that. And I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. I mean, <laughs> the big stuff I don't think about. I really don't. I go like, eh, because in my mind, in my mind, I can't control the big stuff. Mm. Interesting. And I can control the little stuff, which really, it's all the same. I don't control nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we right. Just, yeah, we just convince ourselves that we can. <laughs> Why do we always find that edge of the bed to stump our toe? We know <laughs> that bed has not moved. And we so will weird. find it and stump our toe. So we clearly aren't in control because we're still going to find the edge of that bed to stump our toe, you know? <laughs> yes. You know, in this day and age, and again, if looking at the past few years, there have been abundant opportunities for our joy to be stolen, our lot, you know, our, our future perspective to be crushed and all those things. And so I want to exhort you, if you're listening today, and this is an area that you know has been either robbed from you or you're struggling with, make a decision today. Say, I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to choose the joy of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, that you would work this in me. You would develop this in me to bring about your fullness. Because it, like any fruit, it has to be developed the more you you choose to walk in it. It's like faith. It's an exercising of joy muscle, a joy muscle to get us stronger. But I believe it's really important because it says the joy of the Lord is your strength. So days that you feel like, and we all have them. We're like, oh, I don't really want to get out of bed or I just. <laughs> well, you know, Psalm 46, be still and know that I'm God. And there are many times that I go, okay, Lord, I am. You're right. I'm not going to get out of this bed until you push me out of this bed because I just can't. But it's one more day. Um, and like I said, as long as we separate joy and happiness, so but you will find if you walk through joy, if you keep the joy of the Lord, the sadness will just decrease. Exactly. You may so not be happy, yeah. but your sadness will decrease. Mm -hmm. Your sadness so will decrease. That's so good. And, and even the great exchange, you know, I, I always think about the cross as a place for us to trade, to exchange the things that the enemy tries to use to pull us back, like, like long, long periods of sadness or sorrow, whatever it might be. There's momentary things that, but there's when there's things that we get 
hooked into or trapped into. We say, Lord, I give you this. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sorrow, for my sadness, my sickness, my shame, all these things. In exchange, I receive whatever it is you need, the joy, the peace, the hope, and then choose to receive it. I do. Um, I do. I've done some breakout sessions on overwhelmed to overjoyed, and I'm not going to get into all that now, but something that I have brought up sometimes when the world is crashing in on us, it's because we need to rest. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I think I've said this, to you, I have asked this to you before. If I were to, if you were to think in your head, you see the Churchill Downs, a horse track, picture a horse track. Okay. Now I want you to picture the Daytona 500 or a racetrack, a car racetrack. What is the difference between the two? And it is not the mode of transportation and it is not the ground that it's on. What is the difference? They're both oval tracks. What is the difference? One is a horse drawn, one is a car. No, okay. Uh, no. no. <laughs> well, of course, they go around in like two minutes and then they stop. Okay. Mm. The racetrack, they gotta go 500 miles. Okay. But there's a pit stop. Because right. a car can't go 500 miles without taking a, a break. Neither can we. Mm -hmm. We can't go 24 7, seven days a week. And I'm not even talking the, the eight hours sleep. I'm just talking. There are some times we need to plan our own rest. Yes, we, but the thing about it is, is, you know, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. That's the day of rest. But what do we do? We're in church on Sunday morning. And then we got the prayer meeting in the afternoon. And then we got the church thing. Sometimes our church days are busier than our Monday through Friday, nine to five. So we never really even rest. We rest because we worship, but then we do this and this and this and this. We don't always give ourselves times to rest. Mm -hmm. And that's why whether it's your morning quiet time, your nighttime quiet time, or you're taking care of the kids and you just got to say, kids, go out and play in the street for a while. I don't think I'll tell kids that anymore, but my day we went out and played in the street. So, <laughs> you know, you know, even if it's office, even if you're coming home from work and you got, you got to pull over to the side of the road and just have that 30 minute time. I think we all neglect rest, rest for our mind, rest for our thoughts, rest for meditation, rest for mm -hmm. prayer. We need to rest. Yeah. Jesus rested. That's so good. So. That's so good. And on that note, we will wrap up. And, and as you rest. No, we rest. Up, I don't know. It's joy. We rest in joy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, a scripture, there's a scripture that says, in your presence is fullness of joy. When we rest, you know, there's there's that place of coming aside, resting our body, our soul. But I believe even just resting in him, exactly. there's a fullness of joy that happens. And, and I, I think you're right. A lot of times we are so busy, so distracted that we we don't realize what's stealing our joy. We don't realize what's what's happening until we take that time to reflect, rest and actually tune in, tune in to what's going on in here and our body and write it all down. And by writing it all down and journaling it, we see, Hey, it's really sometimes, Hey, that's not that bad or B that's fixable or C I can't do anything about that. Yeah, exactly. So, well, Renee, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much for really directing the focus onto this really important characteristic that we are called to walk in that, that that the Holy Spirit wants to develop in us and wants to be a hallmark I believe wants to be a distinctive a unique distinctive you know that we talk about in business a unique selling proposition you know the USP <laughs> unique <laughs> spiritual <laughs> positioning <laughs> the unique spiritually unique spiritual positioning. I'll have to think of that <laughs> USP are distinctive as as kingdom women wherever god has you in the marketplace whatever mountain he has you on in government in entertainment on the stage in at home in the education whatever wherever it is god wants to use you 
as a voice of influence, but he wants to use you as a light to draw people to the truth because people need joy. People need yes, joy. Yes. People need joy. People need joy. And we are there the are ones. people on the street that have joy. You know, so it's your circumstances do not dictate our joy. Yeah. Well, where can I know that you have two websites? And so if people want to get a hold of you, which one would be the better of the two? I'll put them both up. Okay. You can uh, ReneeLawless.com contact. You can contact me, but the speakers coach dot net. And that is up. I'm also launching a course starting April 1st, not to step on Lisa's toes. It's a little, uh, it's a very, it's, it'll be about one hour. It's just a little overview on uh, appearance, vocalization, presentation, and Zoom. Because I have, if you go to my speakerscoach.net, you'll get a free uh, little book called How to Be a Star on Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's just set up. It's, it's not how, yeah, I don't do the speech writing. I just tell you how to do it, how to tell it. <laughs> Well, I don't do the writing, but I can tell you how to look good doing it. You know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a part of communication. Exactly. So, exactly. so they can reach out to both those places, ReneeLawless.com or uh, thespeakerscoach.net and reach out to me. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Reach out to Renee. She is a gem, a ball of joy and just a giver of life. And so I so appreciate you, Renee. I love you. Thank I you, love Renee. you too. Oh, <laughs> thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. And thank you everyone for tuning in. We have like four days left. I can't believe it. It's like four days left of this 28 day challenge. And I'll tell you, because people ask me, wow, you must be exhausted. I, I am not. I feel the grace of God is, is so amazing. And I have just loved it. It's just been such a blessing every day. And uh, people like Renee as our guests, just sharing their story, sharing the journey that God has them on, but also the, the treasures that have come out of that, that they're passing on to you. So I hope you have received something today. And I'd love it if you put in the comments, what is one thing that either resonated with you that was a confirmation of what the Lord has been speaking or something he's speaking to you to step forward and be fearless, to step forward and trust him? Maybe it's choosing joy every day practicing the presence of the Lord wherever you are by choosing joy. And you know what? If you kind of get out of that, that's okay. Get back up, get into it again, because it's a it's a muscle, it's a choice, and it's part of who God has made you to be. So thank you, everyone. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.